In today's homework video, we will be learning about the growth of slavery in the United States leading up to the American Civil War and discuss the abolition movement and those who supported it to bring an end to this practice in our country. Remember to follow along with the words in purple on the slides and draw meaningful pictures as you are prompted to in the video. It is important that you listen to the video as well as watch it or you may miss some important information. Title your notes with this and let's get started. The guiding questions for today's lesson are, how did slavery grow between the years of 1790 and 1860 in the United States? What does abolition mean? Why is it important? And what were the main ideas expressed by the abolitionists? Slavery had existed since ancient times when warring nations would take the conquered peoples back with them as prisoners from winning a war, making them their slaves. In the Americas, the Spanish conquistadors had made Native Americans their slaves once their towns and villages had been conquered. As European countries began settling North America, sadly, slaves became an economic necess necessity to make the valuable land profitable through planting crops that required human labor to plant, grow, cultivate, and harvest. Most slaves were taken from their homes. <clears throat> in West Africa by slave traders. Many of these were Portuguese slave traders. Draw a sketch of Africa next to your notes. These slave traders sent these captured Africans against their will on ships. These people were packed in tightly like cargo, laying on their backs in chains side by side to be shipped across the Atlantic Ocean. Thousands of these Africans never made it to the Caribbean islands and the 13 colonies because they died on the way due to horrendous conditions on board. If they did survive the journey, these Africans were sold to plantation owners at auctions. Slave owners then forced their purchased slaves to work in their fields, growing cash crops like rice, cotton, and tobacco. The first slaves in, American, in the American colonies arrived in Jamestown, Virginia in 1619. Over the next 200 years, around 500,000 more slaves were brought to the American colonies. In the United States, slaves were used in the fields, in the homes as cooks, housekeepers, and servants, as well as in businesses, working for their masters, white slave owners, who did not compensate them for their work. Draw a money sign with an X through it to represent the fact that slaves did not get paid for the work that they did. A devastating reality of these slaves was that slavery was for life, and all of the children born to slaves were automatically slaves for life too. For so many, these people would never have the hope of being free. Many slave families were broken up at auction, with husbands and wives, parents and children, and brothers and sisters sold to different plantations around the country. There was no guarantee that your slave master would not sell you again later in life. In the 16, 17, and 1800s, African Americans lived in the United States who lived in the United States were not seen as equal to other humans who were white. Slaves were considered property, and because of that, they were not seen as normal human beings, and basic human rights were not respected. Since slaves were considered property in the culture, different slave owners treated their property in different ways. Not all slaves were physically abused, even though many of them were. Like all property today, some people take care of what they own, and some people take advantage and abuse what they own. However, no matter how nicely a white master or his family treated the slaves living on their plantation or farm, these people would never have their freedom, and this was a very bad thing. You might be thinking to yourself, if slavery was so bad as we know today, why did people back then have slaves? And the fact of the matter was because slaves offered farmers economic success through having cheap labor to work their crops, which they in turn could sell a lot of depending on the more slaves they owned and the more land they could farm. Draw a picture of a large plantation with fields of crops and land for this idea next to your notes. This source of cheap labor was the main motivating factor. Working conditions were hard, their living quarters were ve often very poor, and with unfair treatment, some slaves escaped in an attempt to find freedom. 
Freedom for African Americans existed for those who went north to states in New England or went to Canada. Every now and then, slave owners would free their slaves, but this was rare and was never guaranteed. There were many bad things about slavery. These people were being kidnapped from their homes in Africa. They were being shipped across the ocean without their consent. They were being sold as property like cattle or sheep and not treated with dignity like people. Slaves in the United States had to work without pay for life. They had no chance for becoming free or earning a living for themselves that would get them a better life. Families were often separated from one another. Physical abuse abounded. And the psychological abuse was torture, living every day not knowing how you were going to be treated by those you worked for and having no hope of ever having a future apart from the slave life. Slavery also destroyed the African culture that many had brought with them from their homeland. Even though African Americans had a culture of their own through music and stories, much of it was blended with the culture of the colonies and the South, and many of the old African traditions were lost as a result. Draw shackles next to your notes to show the cruelty of slavery. Between 1650 and 1860, about 10 to 15 million enslaved people were transported from Western Africa to the Americas. Most were shipped to the West Indies, Central America, and South America, as you can see from this map. Check out this map from 1790, which shows the enslaved population immediately following the Revolutionary War. As the United States expands in land size, you will notice how the slave population moves toward the South over the next 60 years. This map shows the enslaved population in 1860. Notice how concentrated the slave populations are in places like Virginia, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and along the Mississippi River, in Louisiana, and the state of Mississippi. This is what the map of the United States looks like in the South a year before the Civil War begins. Not all people in the United States believed that slavery was right. In fact, many people believed that it was wrong and that it should end in the United States. These people were called abolitionists, and the movement to get rid of slavery was called abolition. Some abolitionists were brave and spoke out about what they believed. Draw a picture of an abolitionist speaking out about slavery next to your notes. They held meetings, wrote newspapers, and shared ideas to convince others that slavery was wrong and to join their cause. Abolitionists wanted plans to be put in place to remove slavery from our country. Abolitionists had three major beliefs. One, slavery was morally wrong. Two, slavery was cruel and inhumane. And three, slavery was a violation of the principles of democracy, which means that all men, no matter the color of their skin, were created equal. What is interesting to note is that the slavery grievance or complaint did not make it into the Declaration of Independence in 1776, but the document did say that all men are created equal, like we have learned. Eleven years later, in 1787, the founders at the Constitutional Convention drafted the Constitution and they did not eliminate slavery at that time. So who were some of these abolitionists that fought to end slavery in the United States? One was a man named William Lloyd Garrison. He put the ideas of abolition into words and published an anti-slavery newspaper he called The Liberator. It circulated around Boston, Massachusetts. Go ahead and draw a picture of this newspaper next to your notes. Its purpose was to spread the word that slavery was wrong and get ideas going of what to do about it in the United States. William Lloyd Garrison founded the American Anti-Slavery Society, which was a club people could join who shared the cause of ending slavery. And this club hosted meetings on a regular basis. Another famous abolitionist is a woman you may have heard of, an escaped slave named Harriet Tubman. She was born a slave on a plantation in Maryland. She later escaped from slavery, running away to Pennsylvania, where she earned her freedom. Tubman became famous as an underground railroad conductor. She led 19 different escapes from the South and helped around 300 slaves to escape. 
She was known as Moses because, like the Moses in the Bible, she led her people to freedom. Abolitionists celebrated her courage as she gave them their movement active vision as more and more slaves used the Underground Railroad to find their freedom. Another African American was named Frederick Douglass, and he was a famous abolitionist too. He was a, also a former slave who had run away to gain his freedom. Frederick Douglass was a fiery speaker and gave many speeches telling his own story, rousing crowds of people to join the abolitionist cause. Draw Frederick Douglass giving one of his speeches supporting abolition in the United States. Douglass published his own anti-slavery newspaper too and called it the North Star that circulated throughout Rochester, New York, gaining widespread support. Douglas became friends with Abraham Lincoln, and after the Civil War, Douglas moved to Washington, D.C. with his family. Harriet Beecher Stowe is another name that you should be familiar with at this time, whose contributions to the abolitionist cause made a huge difference in America. This woman was the author of a book titled Uncle Tom's Cabin that many people read in the 1850s and 1860s leading up to the start of the Civil War. Draw a picture of people reading this famous book next to your notes. This book was about a slave and his master living in the South. Harriet Beecher Stowe used the story of Uncle Tom to open the eyes of many to the evils of slavery and consider how wrong it really was, despite culture's acceptance of this practice at the time. Abraham Lincoln actually acknowledged Stowe's book and its impact on the society in supporting ending slavery at this crucial time in history. And he is known for saying, so you're the little lady who started this great war upon meeting Harriet Beecher Stowe during the Civil War in 1862. He gave her credit for angering enough people over slavery in the North that many were willing to go to war over the issue. The final abolitionist we are going to discuss in today's homework video is a man named John Brown. In 1859, only a year and a half before the start of the Civil War, John Brown tried to lead a slave uprising in Virginia. You see, he became frustrated with the peaceful nature of the abolitionist movement. Brown felt that slavery should be ended using whatever means necessary, including violence. He planned to organize and arm slaves in the South so that they would revolt against their white owners and gain their freedom. His logic was that if all of the slaves rose up against their masters, they would have the upper hand. Brown wanted to capture the arsenal at Harper's Ferry to secure enough weapons for the slaves he hoped to arm. On the night of October 16, 1859, Brown gathered his small force together for the raid. There were 21 total, including white men, free black men, one freed slave, and one fugitive slave. The band captured the arsenal, but word of their plans had gotten out to the local townspeople and militia. They surrounded Brown and his men, preventing their escape with their weapons. This standoff lasted two days. Then a group of Marines, led by Colonel Robert E. Lee, arrived from Washington, D.C. to put an end to the uprising. They offered Brown and his men the opportunity to surrender, but Brown refused. The Marines attacked, broke down the door, and captured the men inside. Several of Brown's men were killed. However, Brown survived and was taken prisoner. Brown was convicted of treason and hanged for his crimes. But here's the thing. Many people at the time thought of Brown as a martyr for the abolitionist cause. His story became famous throughout the United States. Although many in the North didn't agree with his violent actions, they did agree with his belief that slavery was wrong and should be ended. Less than a year later, the Civil War would begin.